I joined the company about two years ago uh, as an executive director running one of the divisions and now board, moved up to the board. My background is 30 years in defence, initially as an operator, then running major procurements, then selling major projects back to a procurement thing and uh, subsequently working in this group. Um, I'm going to introduce TP Group, which operates in the aerospace defence markets, the energy and process markets. And for those who have been before, uh, the company was here two years ago when it was called Corac. And for those who are here, they will see a very big transformation from what that company was doing then to what we're doing now. And it's been a, a two years of a journey from a, a business that was effectively an R&D, taking investors' money to create products, into a business that's now a commercial operation. I'm going to go through where we've come from in a moment, but I'll start off by setting the scene, talking about what uh, TP Group does as a whole and what that means for you, the investors, our customers, clients, and of course our staff. Thank you. Can you move it on one for me? When you're in the military, you've got someone who normally does this for you. So you're not used to. Well, while they saw that out, I'll, I'll talk a bit about um, the business then. So we've <coughs> effectively over the last years transformed the business into what is very much a technology and services business. We do full life cycle through life and that includes the design, development, build, servicing and then support into where we, aspects of critical engineering. And I'll talk about some of our customers and the critical things we do for them. The key for us is we do through life business. And if I take you through uh, one of the first examples, we are on a program in the Far East with a submarine manufacturer. We have supplied for 11 years equipment to them for build of submarines. <clears throat> Those submarines will be in service to 2040. So whilst we get the design up front and then the manufacturer, actually the following you know, 25 years of service, support, training, and everything else that goes with those programs is very valuable to us. Particularly, every time we get a new customer in those fields in defence and we can build the relationship, we can get long, long-term programs. Much of we, what we do is very critical to our customer base. And I'll give you a couple of examples. In the pressure vessels, heat exchanges we do in oil refineries, if they break, fail or stop, then the refinery comes to a grinding halt and it costs a lot of money. In the things we do on nuclear submarines, for instance, we're on the deterrent program. If our system on board the submarine doesn't work, the submarine cannot stay at sea or be submerged and produce the deterrent effect for the UK. And that deterrent's been operating for 30 years, and that's how successful we are. But the, the equipment we build in those systems, truly critical to our customers. If we look then at the way the group's structured, We've moved to four business units over the last uh, year, working across the life cycle, starting with design and technology, which takes requirements and converts them into programs, right through to our engineering and maritime uh, business units that build the equipment, and then finally the managed solutions, which looks through the service, uh, the provision of capabilities, training programs, and everything else that goes with those um, businesses. The other benefit, of course, is that we use our managed services business to help the customer write requirements in the first place. So we're putting people into the Ministry of Defence to help write requirement documents that may well come back to us when it goes into competition. So we cover the whole circle of the gambit. In <clears throat> the design and technology at the top there, that's the very original business uh, that this company was some 15 years ago. It's grown out of the compressor and rotating equipment design work we did then. It's around 20 people based in Slough and then others in each of the business units to support them. In the engineering business there on the left, we've uh, got a factory up in Manchester with about 60 staff. They do pressure vessels, <coughs> heat exchangers, 
subcontract manufacturing, uh, big, big lumps of equipment up to sort of 50 tonnes in capacity. In Maritime, that's based down in Portsmouth, again about 60 staff, and we do the high-tech uh, support to life equipment for submarines there. And then the managed services business at the bottom, which is somewhere that the business used to do, hidden in the defence side, we've struck that out, opened office in Bristol and investing heavily in that business because we see a lot of opportunity. Into the detail of what we do then, uh, starting in the left, in the maritime area, we do life support systems for submarines. So if you think back to Das Boat and the old movies in the war, submarines would go underwater, stay there for up to 24 hours, everyone would be sweating, running out of air, waiting to surface when the warships have gone away, surface, run a fan, pump it full of clean air and dive again. In the modern world, you can't do that because your submarine would just be found, destroyed, and that would be the end of it. So there are new equipments that we build that we put into submarines. At a nuclear submarine, we build a system that creates oxygen from water, removes the CO2 from the atmosphere, the carbon monoxide, the hydrogen, the stuff from when they burn the sausages, because it's an enclosed environment, it all has to be removed. And we remove that and then we very cleverly deal with it to pump it overboard. If you just got this gas and pumped it at depth, it would the bubbles would all burst, you'd make a lot of noise and be detected. So we very cleverly manage that gas as well. So the submarines, a ballistic missile submarine can stay underwater forever until it runs out of food using our equipment. So that's the very top end of what we do. And we do that for the UK, for France, and I'd hope we'll be doing that for Brazil when they get their programme sorted out. But anywhere there's nuclear submarines, we do that. In the other submarines in the world, there is an arms race going on in the submarine market, particularly in the Far East. And they're moving from submarines that used to surface every 24 hours, suck air in, into submarines that have got to stay underwater for you know, 10 days, two weeks, three weeks. So we use not the oxygen generation because they don't need the oxygen because of the way they operate, but they need the atmosphere removed of CO2, CO and all the rest of it. So we build the systems we put in those submarines to do that. And again, they're very high tech. They have to work, they can't fail for obvious reasons. They have to produce no noise, no vibration, be shock loaded to 100G, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, across the world, there is a company in America does it for the American submarines. There is clearly someone in China and someone in Russia who does it for theirs. And then we pretty much mop up the rest of the world. And that's because there are a lot of barriers to entry into this market. The technology you could probably reproduce, but being able to do it, to 100G shock loading, making no noise and vibration, and the sort of requirements that our customers flow to us is very difficult. Um, and the fact that no one's ever tried to really compete with us tells you that. Uh, in the UK and France, we're pretty much sole source as well to supply. We're on all their submarines. Um, if I move to the next bit, we talk about high-speed turbo machines, thermal systems and fabrications. The engineering uh, division up in Manchester building pressure vessels, heat exchangers. We're doing that for the energy and process market. We've also in the last year qualified into the nuclear industry where we got badges as fit for nuclear by Rolls-Royce and EDF. So we're taking that across into those industries and that also gives us a backward way through our defence side into the submarine building programme again. And getting qualified for nuclear takes you into those programmes and it's clearly a substantial nuclear submarine building programme in process and further announcements due to be made this year around Trident replacement. These um, machines we build up there, they use very exotic machinery, uh, exotic materials and fairly complex welding techniques for the industries we're in. We also do uh, subcontract manufacturing up there and we bought a business last year that was part of our supply chain, a sheet metal manufacturer, that we basically went down through the supply chain, picked up bits of the supply chain and bolted them on but a very profitable little business that we will recover the costs in two to three years, which has been very good for us. Also in uh, the engineering, we're building high-speed turbo machines that the design and technology part of the business uh, developed and designed over the last few years that we've now been able to commercialise. And a good example of that is we're building um, steam micro-turbine expanders for Sarco's Spirex Sarco. And we announced that last year We've got a 10-year deal with them, and uh, we're looking at how we now that move that on into further machines. But these are all in the waste energy and energy recovery systems. 
if you look across to the right hand side of the chart now this is um, you can see an 80% 20% split the managed solutions piece we've been doing in defense as I say to, to a couple of million a year we've really expanded that and started chasing new business and we see two routes into this firstly what I would call the thin prime so um, in defense at the moment the Ministry of Defense is getting rid of a large number of civil servants, 10,000 more were announced in the recent defence review to leave. And they've also decided to reduce the, the number of uh, contracts they place. So in one area of business, they've taken 800 contracts and thinned it down to 20. So what's happening is all the primes are moving in and taking the big contracts and then flowing it out. That's been an opportunity for us because we can move into the prime space, bring a load of SMEs that used to hold these contracts but are too small to bid, package them up as a, a whole group, we put a thin cost base on top and then prime that contract. The neat thing is, you know, Babcock, BAE, Kinetic, Fraser Nash, Atkins are all trying to do the same, but we have a cost base that's tiny in comparison to them and their overhead rates effectively charred, mean those, the things they can bid in are very expensive. So we're opening up in that area heavily. The second side to that managed services is that with 10,000 people coming out of defense, and an increased procurement budget, something's got to give and somewhere in the middle all the work that needs to be done about rec writing requirements, documents, all the uh, business cases, someone has to still do that. So we're moving into that space to provide those services on a cost basis into the Ministry of Defence. And we see those two areas as good growth for us uh, as a business. And to do that we've gone out and poached a load of people from some of those big primes to help us do that. And then <coughs> Bottom right there, the um, technical services piece, the design and technology house. This is very much start of life, looking at uh, waste energy at the moment and waste energy storage. We're working with customers like Annex, Hayward Tyler and others, uh, Sparex Sarco, to move into that market. And that's because the uh, compressors that we designed in the previous history of the business have very good applicability in this area because they're very efficient and they're uh, frictionless, oilless, which works neatly into that market. I'll talk about two examples of what we've been doing in this area over the last couple of years. With Star Annex, uh, we've developed a system for the US market where when you get gas coming through a pipeline across the states, it comes in very high pressure. When you get it out of wherever you're gonna use it, it's at very low pressure. What they do at the moment is they just drop it down through valve systems. If you put our system in there, an expander, you get terrific generation across the turbine of electricity. And that electricity can be sold back into the grid or used where you're dropping the pressure down if you haven't got access to electricity. And we're doing this simply, Starnex have come to us said, design the system, and we'll give you a royalty when we sell everyone. So that's an example of how we've moved from investing ourselves into getting other people to invest in products. The, uh, another uh, thing that we announced recently, we've been funded by the EU under Horizon 2020 to work with two universities in the UK, taking our capability and uh, what we've designed previously into looking at waste energy storage, sorry, energy storage using liquid air. And so, again, funded projects not using shareholders' money. Finally, along the bottom there is a list of all our customers. We're on contract with every one of those. And you can see we have a very decent customer base to lean on. With BAE Systems, we are one of 15 key suppliers to that company, despite the size of the group. So that's an overview of what we've done. Very quickly now I'm going to talk of the history. So an overview of how the company's operated. Back here, we were a single product, single market, spending shareholders money to develop a product and you can see with no revenues where we were over the last five years we've really changed the thing around transformed bought some businesses and are focusing very clearly on being a revenue generating commercial enterprise and we announced uh, last week in a trading update that we've made adjusted break even last year which given where we were three years ago is a significant change for the group So where to the future? In maritime, we see a very significant growth opportunity. The, the submarine market is expanding rapidly in the Far East. 
In the UK, there is a successor program, the Trident program, worth something like 40 billion to BAE, to who we're a key supplier and we're going to work with. DCNS will be doing the next generation of Trident equivalent for France very shortly. Brazil has a nuclear submarine building program. So there's lots of opportunities out in a market where we are virtually the only company you can come to to get that technology. In engineering, we intend expanding our subcontract manufacturing, particularly into the nuclear field and particularly into defence. BAE up in Barrow is desperately trying to recruit engineers, thousands of them, to build these new submarines. We've got that capability. And we'll be looking to partner with them and support them on those programmes. Design and technology, we've got the IP and know-how, and we're now trying to transfer that into commercial applications. And then finally, the managed services piece where I took through the thin prime, using the opportunities of all the changes in government and defence to really get a, an opportunity there. In closing, those who have been here two years ago will see that we really have changed the business and transformed it. It's part of a journey, and the next, year's, next year we intend to continue that trajectory sold saw on the profit graph. We're on stand 17. If anyone wants to come and see us, please do.